Hey everyone, this week we're in the Peak District and we're asking, do you really need a tripod for landscape photography? So this week I've come out to an area in the Peak District called the Roaches. Shout out to Dave at Let's Click Photography because he's always going to this area and that's how I first became aware of it. And I'm with my friend Matt and we're going to have a little wander around, see what we can find to photograph. But while I'm here, what I really want to talk about is, do you need a tripod for landscape photography? Is it essential? Because we always take one, they do help with a lot of things, but can you do it without one? So I'm going to be talking about the benefits of using one, the benefits of not having one, and any negatives for either as well. So let's head on and we'll see what we can find to photograph and talk a little bit more about tripods. One of the most important things you need to ensure if you're not using a tripod is that your shutter speed is fast enough to avoid camera shake. The best way to do that is to set your aperture to whatever you want to capture your scene and get the depth of field that you require. And then take a note of your focal length and double your shutter speed so it's twice as much as whatever your focal length is. So for example, if you're using a focal length of 100 millimeters, try and use a shutter speed of one 200th of a second or faster. That way you'll avoid any camera shake or blur in your image. Two things that are really difficult to do without a tripod are long exposures and any image where you have to stack multiple shots. A long exposure, for example if you're taking a shot of a waterfall and you want to blur out the water, is going to be really difficult without a tripod because your shutter is open for a long amount of time to get that really blurred effect in the water. But if you haven't got the tripod, any movement that you make is also going to be recorded and you're going to end up with a blurry image. You can do a long exposure shot without a tripod, but you're gonna to have to limit your exposure time to around about a second or less. And it helps to have vibration reduction in your camera or your lens. So make sure you've got that turned on. And it's a good idea to have that turned on anyway, if you're doing shots handheld without a tripod. And if you're gonna be stacking any images, you also need to have your shot roughly in the same place so that when you stack your images together, they line up. Now you can do this without a tripod, but it means that when you get your images into your software later, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to align all those images than if they were taken using a tripod.
Some of the benefits of not using a tripod are that you've got less weight to carry and also it can be easier to frame up your composition because you're not anchored in one spot. You can move around and get high and low and that can really help out. Today I'm really just scouting out the area, trying to find some good compositions and I'll come back when there's better light and I'll probably use a tripod on that occasion. But right now it's just really easy to get the compositions so that's really good. If you do really need to stabilise your shot, for example if you're taking a long exposure or the light's really low, then just find somewhere flat to put it down, somewhere nice and dry, like this rock, or you can use the back of your backpack and that'll just keep your camera nice and steady and make sure you've got a nice sharp shot. If all else fails, why not try some ICM photography? That's intentional camera movement. So it's where you purposefully move the camera as you take the shot and that blurs your image and it can look really creative. I've done a video on that before, so I'll link up top if you want to go back and watch that. And that's more or less it for this video. In conclusion, you definitely don't need to use a tripod for landscape photography. It can be useful to bring one, particularly if you're doing long exposures or if you want to stack multiple shots together. But it is also really liberating not to have the tripod. You don't have to carry all that weight and it's easier to move around and compose your scene. So big thanks to Matt who helped out with the video in today, that's been a big help and I've had a really good time today at the Roaches, it's a great location. It was mainly just a scouting mission today just to find out some good compositions and I will come back with a tripod and I'll come back in good light, golden hour, sunrise, sunset and really nail that shot. But that's it for now, so thanks a lot everyone. If you're not already subscribed and you'd like to do so, you can click down here on the big red button and that way you'll keep up to date with everything I'm doing each and every week. There's a new video every Sunday morning, 10 a.m. UK time. So I hope you'll join me next week for the next one. And until then, thanks a lot, everyone. And bye for now. Hey, everyone. This week, we're in the Peak District and we're asking, do you really need a landscape photography for a tripod? <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm going to discuss stuff. I might talk about like, photography. And if you do really need to stabilise your shot, for example if you're taking a long exposure or if the light's really low, then just find somewhere to put your... Oh, my phone beeped. And if you do really need to stabilise your shot, for example if you're taking a long exposure or if you've got really low light, then just find somewhere nice and flat to put it down, make sure it's dry. You can find a rock, like this one for example, or you... <laughs> Uh, 
heavy stuff instead. 